Perfect. Hello, we are joined by Team Heretics who are coming off of their match against G2. I don't see all enough. Yeah. You guys got us? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we'll begin with the remote media first. Uh, Strafe, would you like to start us off? Yep. Uh, congratulations on the win. This is the third time you faced G2 and you were finally able to close it out and not just close it out but win dominantly. What changed after the last two losses? What was the deciding factor in today's game? It me ensure that you guys close out the maps pretty convincingly. You want me to talk? Um, I think we just played how we know we can play today. Like fundamentally, everyone was on point. Um, and it's not taking away anything from G2 when I say this, or don't want to come across as egotistical, but I feel like we were better than them definitely the second time we played. Um, and we just kind of let it slip with our fundamentals being a bit poor. Um, and I think we learned a lot from the two times we played them. The first time, they definitely outplayed us. Um, second time, not so much. I think they would probably look back at it and think the same. So when it came to today, we just drilled that the fundamentals are going to win this game. We didn't have crazy amounts of time to prep, but the prep that we did was good. And we had kind of like anti-strats for their anti-strats again. So I felt like we were one step ahead. Um, and yeah, we just played fundamentally well. And obviously some huge moments from everyone in the team individually helped us across the line. Yes. Oh, thank you for the answer. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. We'll go to Nerditude next. Thank you so much. My question is for Neil Sinio. What, what mistakes did you notice from G2 in the match where they made a comeback and defeated you, which you were able to exploit in this match to win? Um, so when we played them, I don't think they necessarily made that many mistakes that we exploited. It was just we knew how they were going to play. Um, I feel like we made a lot of mistakes when we played them the last time, and they're an incredibly good team, very, very good team. So if you give teams at this level any kind of chance to win the rounds, they're going to win them. And I think that's just what happened. Like Valorant or almost any sport, when you get to the highest level, it's literally whatever team makes the least mistakes in the day is going to win. And that's what happened today, I think, for us. We just made... Uh, a lot less mistakes than we did the last time and we didn't let them capitalize on them because if we didn't play to our best level they would have beaten us again like they're a good team a really good team so i'm just happy that yeah we didn't make any mistakes and when we did we had some big big rounds like i said from some, some individuals to claws back thank you we'll go next to pedro romero Guys, uh, likewise, congrats on the victory, progressing to the grand finals. Uh, with this result, we're gonna have a new, uh, uh, a master slash international champion. That's what I'm trying to say, yeah, international champion. Uh, and that said, uh, looking at this team's run, as as we've been saying so many times so far at this point, going through many obstacles, either before, during, and even right now, um, uh, at this point, getting ready for the grand finals, and yeah, uh. It, it, it's it's want to ask for anyone that like to answer just um if you could pinpoint one thing that just sparked this team's run and just making this all happen and just be on the precipice of gaining that title what would that one thing be and why i mean i guess i'll answer yeah yeah i think it's just the bond that we all have as a team and a group like that's what pushes us through at the end of the day it doesn't matter who we have in the team, if it's Patty, if it's Miniboo, and again, we're really, really happy to have Patty with us, and it is just like a kind of family that we've built here, and that's something I did a lot in off season with Boo, with Benji, when we were building the team, we wanted to have a really strong bond, because, you know, you're together a lot, um, and that's like the core of our team, we just want to be friends inside out, uh, inside the game and outside of the game. So everyone gets on really well, everyone learns, everyone's eager to learn, and everyone has the same mindset. So I think that's all it is, really. And again, like I said, we're lucky to have someone like Patty being able to, to come in and do such a good job. Yeah, I was going to add to that. Like, I don't think we wanted any problematic players, and I think we've done exactly that. Um, we've got a team full of people that are really nice, just kind people. Um, I think that does just genuinely help. I think a lot of these teams that are doing badly... Uh, a lot of it's due to like problematic players, and yeah, I think we've avoided that very well. Thank you. We'll go to Strafe next. 
Uh, this is so anyone who wants to answer. First of all, uh, you would be facing Gen Z for the first time tomorrow. Uh, first of all, what are your expectations from the game? Also, uh, what or how big of a role would the map V2 advantage play in tomorrow's game? And do you think it's a disadvantage at all for you guys? I can speak. Uh, I think we're really excited to play against Shinji. Like, we've made friends with him since being here. Um, you know, especially with Texture, we've met him in ranked a couple of times. Uh, he's, a, he's a very cool guy. Um, I think the map video, you know, is what it is. Um, I don't think we're going to think about it too much. Like, sure, they get to, you know, pick a cent probably or whatever. Like, is what it is. But, you know, we, we know we're a strong team. We can come back from anything. So, um, I think if we just stick to our, you know, what we've done so far here, what Scott said, then, you know, I think it, it'll be a very good game. And I think hopefully we'll win. Thank you. All the best for the future. Thank uh, you. For tomorrow, sorry. All good, mate. Uh, we'll go back to Pedro for the next question. Got a question for for Benji. Um, as has been documented various times already, either bef before and even during this event, you know, you, you've had uh, some time playing in Fortnite, and just having uh, a one a few prominent events there, and comparing that to now, I mean, even the fact that you basically started from scratch, getting trying to get noticed, uh, then uh, building yourself up, reaching tier one, playing alongside uh, these crop of players and just getting to an international grand final. I want to ask, do you feel making it to the finals of, of, of this message? Do you feel that's better than, like, say, making grand finals of, like, any past Fortnite tournaments, given the road that you took uh, up to this point? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I, I definitely think this is probably like the biggest achievement of my life so far. Um, you know, in Fortnite, I didn't, you know, I was making grand panels, but I wasn't <laughs> winning anything. Uh, Valorant is a lot different. You know, we've had to beat a lot of really good teams to get to this point. Um, so I would like to top it off with obviously winning the grand finals. I think that would, yeah, that would be incredible. But yeah, it, it's definitely the, the, it clears, it clears all the Fortnite tournaments that I've played in the past. Ninja was better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you for the question. We'll go next to uh, Nerditude. Thank you so much. I have a other question for Nilsinho. Nilsinho, I'm not sure about this info, but did you only use one timeout in three maps? Uh I think so. Yeah, like to be fair, um, a lot of defense. Yeah, 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 like. We're kind of ahead of it almost every time. And I feel like something me and my assistant coach, obviously he's not here right now, uh, something we wanted to focus on a lot was using the other coach's timeout as my timeout. So we had, you know, I basically felt like I used them, but I didn't. So we made good use of the other coach's uh, timeout, thankfully. And yeah, I didn't really need to do much. It was, it was good. Nice. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll go back to Pedro for the next question. I've got a question for Boo this time. You know, as as one of the the, the few people that remained from that 2023 squad, I've got to ask you just where do you kind of see the the biggest difference from that 2023 squad to now, and have you kind of transitioned yourself in adjustments from that point to now, and how do you think you you've been able to then you know play so well as a leader IG on just making your calls uh, so far in this tournament? Um, last year, I think we had a wrong team in terms of personalities. I couldn't really show myself fully. Like the reason I'm calling well or the reason I'm playing well is because everybody trusts me. Like whatever they, they say they do, and this gives like insane amounts of confidence. So even if you're calling something wrong, they still do it. And because they're so good, they still went wrong. It gives insane levels of confidence and it feels like I know everything. So like, it's not just me, it's like everybody. And I think that's the biggest difference from last year. Thank you. Uh, we'll take the in-house questions next. This is Esports Focus and the question is for what? Your grand finals rival, Genji, performed super well in this Masters. And also, you guys have 
in such good shape for the past two days. How confident are you to take the champion trophy? I'm taking my confidence from my team. Like we said, we are like connected to each other. If someone do like something wrong, we're gonna do it together and win it. So I have full confidence against Genji and we're gonna send their home. <laughs> We're going home the same day. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Anyway, we will win because I think we are. They are still good team. I really respect them. They are my friends. But I think we are better, like as a team. So it's gonna be hard match, hardest match we're gonna play. Pro I mean, we are played probably. But I hope we're gonna win it. There we go. I trust my team. Uh, here is a question from Billy Billy and want to ask Wood. And it's your first time come to the VCT Masters and you made it to the final. We can see that you play better and better since the Swiss round and to now. Every time you don't clutch, the audience will give you so much applause. So I want to ask that the applause from the audience will give you a lot of pressure or it will make you be more excited in the game. Like, I think we answered that like before, like the stage, like other things like pawns, like affecting us better. Like we are just getting hype. We are also, I think we have more pawns than Genji in here. So uh, it's gonna be with us, Pro gonna be with us. I think we're gonna use it. We're gonna use it so well. We will have so much hype and probably I'll just stand up after every round. <laughs> okay, thank you. And I to Billy Billy. <laughs> and he's first. Uh, are there any more questions from the in-house media? Okay, we'll go back to remote. We got a couple more. Uh, Elaine from One Esports. Hi. So speaking of the fans, a lot of the fans want to know the origin story behind your teddy bear hat, Benji. Could you share with us whether there's a special reason behind this specific hat? Um, there isn't anything specific, but um, I always really liked how Boaster did like some cool walkouts and stuff. And I'm a, I'm a little Boaster fanboy. So um, I wanted to have something like a little bit cool. Um, so when I was in Berlin, um, I was able to buy it at the like the merch store. And, you know, I played League as well. So I, and I like I like Tibbers. So I thought it was a cool hat. I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to walk out with it. And it's kind of just stuck. And the one game I didn't I forgot to bring it. Uh, we lost. So from from like now until I finish my career, I'm gonna wear the hat. Uh, so yeah, something like it's something like my sunglasses. Like yeah, yeah, it's like it's a good like luck charm. It's yeah, a good luck charm. Yeah, but there's yeah. nothing, nothing specific. I just thought it looked cool. So yeah, so it was a good question. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, we, Thank you. We had a couple of questions submitted by uh, the attending media that I'll read out now. This is from the standard for uh, Benji Fishy. Um, how confident are you about the match against Genji tomorrow? Um, yeah, I'm feeling really confident. I think, you know, I, I was going to say it earlier, but I think the fact that we've, you know, now played more games on this big stage than Gen G is going to come into effect. Um, I, I, feel, I feel like it's kind of the same as, you know, uh, the Swiss stage where the first seed teams didn't have the experience on stage. And that's, I think, kind of why you saw a lot of them do badly. I think now that we've got more experience on this stage, we know what it's like. Um, it's going to be an advantage for us. And at, at this point, I think we can beat anyone. I think we're right now playing like the best team in the world. Um, so yeah, we're not scared of anyone. And But yeah, they're a good team. It'll be a good game. So yeah, but I'm confident. Um, the next question is, um, how do you feel about becoming one of the favorite pro players among Thai Valorant fans? Me? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. That's quite cool. Uh, no, I, yeah, I love it, man. I feel like... Every like international event, I'm okay. Masters Madrid, I don't think I made the best impression of myself, um, especially during the Paper X game. I think I got got a few haters. Uh, I, I I like to think now I've kind of cleared my name a little bit. I'm not actually toxic. Um, <laughs> it was it was just in the heat of the moment. Um, but yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. Like I've gotten a lot of support just everywhere, and it's really nice to see. Um, it gives me a lot of confidence, um, and obviously my team. You know, I think we're all getting. A lot of support which i think is very deserved like these guys are all incredible um so yeah i hope to um to carry on getting some more fans thank you and uh last question this is from the circles thailand 
Uh, before competing in VCT, did you think you would perform this well? Um, you know, I, I knew, you know, when I first swapped to, to Valorant, I kind of knew what it took to get to a high level in esports. Um, I knew how much time you'd have to put in, how many sacrifices you'd have to do. Um, so I was prepared for it. I definitely did not expect it to come this quickly. Um, I I kind of knew in my head I'd get here one day, but I was thinking more like uh, in like a five year timeline sort of thing. Um, but no, I mean it's been it's been close to two years now. Like it's just under two years since I swapped to Valorant. Um, so yeah, no, I'm super happy, but no, I didn't I didn't expect it. Right, and we'll take the final question from Nerditude. Hi, this question is uh, from Raquel Ferreira of Mice Esports. And the question again goes to Benji Fishy. Yeah. After uh, success in Fortnite, you are in the grand final of Master Shanghai in Valorant. How does it feel to be between the best game in another competitive game? Uh, yeah, it's amazing, man. I mean, like, I mean, I said it before, but like, I didn't really expect it to come this quickly. Um, it's, it really feels like an honor because. You know, I was a big fan of just Valorant esports in general. So getting to play against some of the players that I looked up to was, it has been really, really cool. And yeah, you know, I think I've kind of set myself up nicely for the future. I think people know how good I am now um, and also how good our team is. So yeah, it feels, feels amazing. Awesome. Uh, I believe that is the last question. Heretics, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.